During our last lecture, we discussed the normal probability distribution. The normal distribution is for continuous random variables. There are several other probability distributions that are important. Of course, the normal distribution is the most important probability distribution in all of statistics. But there are a few places in your textbook they use different probability distributions other than the normal distribution for various purposes. Um, in your textbook, there is no specific chapter dedicated for the other distributions other than the normal distribution, and I think there's one other distribution, which is the binomial distribution and uh, the Bernoulli distribution. Uh, there's one chapter for that, but in addition to those distributions, we have several other probability distributions that are important. Your textbook, in various different chapters, refer to those distributions time to time. Rather than visiting the probability distributions irregularly at those different chapters, what I thought was to discuss two complete chapters, additional chapters, regarding those probability distributions. Why two chapters? Well, because we have two types of quantitative random variables. We have discrete probability distributions and continuous probability distributions for discrete random variables and continuous random variables respectively. So, during this lecture, what I'm going to do is to discuss the probability distributions dedicated for discrete random variables. Well, there are so many discrete probability distributions. We are not going to see all of them. We will see just a few discrete probability distributions that are required for intro statistics level. So I'm going to call this chapter Instructor's Chapter 1 because there's no specific chapter dedicated for discrete probability distributions that I'm going to discuss today. I have posted this lecture note on Canvas, so please go ahead and download that, and then we can discuss and you can fill these points one by one as usual. So the first point is discrete random variables. Since today we are going to discuss only the discrete probability distributions, we have to know what are the discrete random variables. We already discussed this one, but we will raise it to see if we can still remember. At the point number one, we have discrete random variables. Now these are the random variables which are countable, countable in nature. Okay, so the outcomes are countable. That means your random variable x can take the values such as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Between two countable values, there cannot be any other values found. One example could be um, the number of meteorites entering the sky within an hour, or the number of vehicles entering a certain parking lot within a given day. Whenever you have like number of something, it's a discrete random variable. Okay? Um, and also think about flipping a coin. There are possible two outcomes, head or tail. Just two outcomes, head or tail. There's nothing in between. It's also a discrete random variable. Think about rolling a die. There are one of six possible outcomes if it has six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that's all. Sometimes those countable random variables are finite, such as rolling a die. You can only have only six outcomes. Okay, so it's a possible example, rolling a die. And if you look at some other examples, such as number of vehicles passing an intersection within a given day, that's also a discrete random variable. Okay. I will say number of vehicles through an intersection. Now, the first variable is discrete and finite. The second example, it doesn't have a specific upper limit. We cannot say um, there will be only up to 10 vehicles allowed through an intersection. 
even though it will be a finite upper limit, the upper limit is not fixed. Okay? So it can be considered an infinite upper limit. So this is also discrete and upper limit unknown. Okay, can be considered the upper limit is infinity. So there can be discrete random variables of any of these two natures. And there are probability distributions dedicated for these scenarios. Now, if you go to point number two, you can see the names of the discrete probability distributions that we will discuss in intro statistics class. The first one we discuss will be the Bernoulli distribution. It's so simple. And your calculator even doesn't have that function because it's so simple. And then we have binomial distribution. And then we will discuss something called the Poisson distribution. And then we have discrete distribution and discrete uniform distribution. So those are the only discrete probability distributions that you will discuss in intro statistics class. Before working on those probability distributions, we need to make sure there are some probability statements that can be written using symbols and there's one specific thing that we have to observe. Now we will go to point number three. For discrete random variable x, there are three probability statements given. Under point number three, we have probability x equals k. Now if my x was a continuous random variable, what is this probability? This probability is equal to zero if x is continuous. That's very important. But here, in this section, we discuss only the discrete probability distributions. That means for discrete random variables. So a discrete random variable being equal to a given value may or may not be zero. So don't take this as zero by default. Most of the cases you see, this probability will never be equal to zero. I will simply generally write that this may or may not be zero. Okay, for discrete x. Even though I wrote it as may or may not be zero, remember, for most of your cases, this probability will never be equal to zero when x is discrete. Then probability x lesser than or equal to k. Probability x is lesser than or equal to k. This in general means the probability of x is equal to 0 plus probability of x is equal to 1 plus probability of x is equal to 2. Likewise, we write up to probability that x is equal to k. That's the meaning of this probability. For example, if I need probability x lesser than or equal to 3, where x is a discrete random variable, then this means probability x is equal to 0 plus probability x is equal to 1 plus probability x is equal to 2 plus probability x is equal to 3. That's because I need x is lesser than or equal to 3. Now this can also be written as probability x is strictly lesser than 4, correct? Strictly lesser than 4 means lesser than or equal to 3 because x is a discrete random variable. Now these kinds of probabilities can be found using your calculator with something called the CDF, okay? Your distribution name and CDF. For example, if your x follows the Poisson distribution, which we will discuss. These kinds of probabilities can be found using Poisson CDF. If your x is binomial distribution, these kinds of probabilities can be found using binomial CDF. To find exact probabilities of this form, probability x equal to a given value, we use the distribution name PDF. PDF stands for probability distribution function. CDF stands for cumulative distribution function. Remember, 
we use PDF only if your X is discrete. If your X is continuous, we will never ever use PDF. What if I need to find the probability that X is greater than or equal to K plus 1? Now that's a right hand probability. I need to find the probability X is greater than or equal to K plus 1. Or the same thing can be seen as probability x is strictly greater than k. Which is probability x is greater than or equal to k plus 1. Now this means probability x is equal to k plus 1 plus probability x is equal to k plus 2 plus probability x is equal to k plus 3 and so on. Now, if there is no specific upper limit, such as the example, the number of vehicles passing through an intersection, I have to keep writing this infinite number of times. So this probability calculation is not so straightforward. Now, how can I find these kind of probabilities? Well, I know that the total probability should always be equal to 1. For any valid probability distribution, the total probability should be equal to 1. So if my x is a discrete random variable, that means if your x is of the form 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, even if it doesn't have a specific upper limit, the probability that x is equal to 0 plus probability x is equal to 1 plus probability x is equal to 2 plus probability x is equal to 3, and so on. If I add all of those probabilities, that summation should be equal to 1. No matter how many outcomes you have. Some outcomes may have zero probabilities. The total probability should be equal to one, always. We are going to use that property in order to find these kinds of probabilities. So, if I take probability x is lesser than or equal to k plus probability x is greater than or equal to k plus 1, that means I'm technically adding all the probabilities of the possible outcomes. That summation should be equal to 1. So, I can manipulate the terms and obtain an equation for probability x greater than or equal to k plus 1. This will be equal to 1 minus probability x less than or equal to k. Right? We found this probability using CDF. All you have to do is to subtract that probability from 1 in order to find this probability. Okay? So this equation is what you have to write as the third point given under point number 3. This equation is very important. So we'll write down an example for that equation as well. Say for example, I need to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6. So if my x is a discrete random variable, this should be equal to 1. Probability 1 minus, 1 minus probability x is lesser than or equal to 1. k plus 1 is 6. On the right hand side, what I have is k not k plus 1. 1 unit lesser than the value written here. So I wrote a 6 here, so I must write 5 on the right hand side. Probability x greater than or equal to 6 is equal to 1 minus probability x lesser than or equal to 5. That is if x is discrete. Now what if I have to find a probability such as, let's say probability x is greater than 7 probability that x is strictly greater than 7. What does that mean? Can x be equal to 7? No. I need the probabilities from 8 if x is discrete. Okay. So this can be equivalently written as x is greater than or equal to 8. Right? x is greater than or equal to 8 can be written using this equation as 1 minus probability x is lesser than or equal to what? 
I have written 8 here, 1 less than that means 7. Okay? Please practice this equation a few more times until you are completely familiar. If you have any questions, just shoot an email. Okay? I'll try to explain again. Let's move on to point number 4. So what we will do in this discussion? We will identify the random variable x and we will write down the distribution of x using the standard notations, just like how we did for the normal distribution. That will always be part A of your questions regarding the distributions. And then we will also identify the mean and the variance of the random variable x. And then we will evaluate the probabilities of the form probability x is equal to k. Because x is a discrete random variable for this section, the probability that x is equal to k is very unlikely to be zero. To evaluate the probabilities of the form probability x equals k, we will use the distribution PDF in your calculator. And then I will also need to find the probabilities of the form x is lesser than or equal to k. We can simply use the distribution CDF of your calculator for that purpose. And then to evaluate probabilities of the form x is greater than or equal to k plus 1, I have to use that previous equation. What is that equation again? Probability x is greater than or equal to k plus 1 is equal to 1 minus probability x is lesser than or equal to k. This is for discrete random variables only. Let's go to point number 5. The Bernoulli distribution. The Bernoulli distribution is the simplest probability distribution on earth. And the Bernoulli distribution is also for discrete random variables. What kind of discrete random variables? So we are working with Bernoulli distribution at this point. Okay? This is for discrete random variable x with some special characteristics, which has only two outcomes and only one trial. Okay? Discrete random variable x with only two outcomes, two possible outcomes, and only one trial. So this is the Bernoulli trial. They are called Bernoulli trials. To model these things, we use something called the Bernoulli distribution. So what are the examples? Example, I will flip a coin and see which side turns up. Okay, Flip the coin. How many times will I flip the coin? Only one time. Because I have only one trial. Two possible outcomes, one trial. I will flip the coin only once. I still have two possible outcomes. Outcomes are head or tail. And let's say I need to roll a die and I need six. I'm not interested in any of the other numbers. Roll a die for six. And we do it only one time. Roll a die for six and do it only once. So what are the possible outcomes? I can have six or any other. Just two outcomes. I can have six or any other number. Um, think about a patient's recovery from a sickness. Okay. I can say recovered or not recovered. Okay. Or I would say survived. Or dead. It may be a major surgery for one patient. Okay.
okay, sickness recovery for one patient. Why one patient? It's because I can allow only one trial. These are all examples for Bernoulli trials. So the Bernoulli trials have only two possible outcomes and it is done only one time. I need the probability of one event. In general, the two events are called success and failure. Maybe if I flip the coin, this can be called the success head, and the tail then can be called the failure. Of course, the definition of success and failure is up to the person who runs the experiment. I can define the way that I like. Roll a die for six. So I will say six is my success. The other event is called the failure. Survival can be called success. Death can be called failure. Now, just two events, and then I will need a probability. So, in general, we will define it this way. In general, X has two outcomes. What are those two outcomes? One is called success. And the other one is failure. Now I will need the probability of success. Probability of success will be always given. Okay. And we will say P is P is the probability of success. Well, that means what should be the probability of failure? We know the total probability is equal to 1 for any distribution. Now, for these examples, I have only two outcomes. So if the probability of success is equal to P, the probability of failure should be equal to 1 minus p, because in that case, p plus 1 minus p is equal to 1, right? So remember that. In Bernoulli distribution questions, you are given only the probability of success. So the calculation of probability of failure is up to you. So the probability of failure should be 1 minus p is the probability of failure. For example, if the probability of success is 20%, the probability of failure should be 80%. Are these probabilities written as percentages or are they written as decimals? Well, it's a personal preference. Some people would like to write them as percentages, some other people would like to write them as decimals. In this class, both formats are acceptable. You may write your answers in terms of decimals or in terms of percentages. If you write as decimals, please go up to four decimals always. If you write as percentages, go up to two decimals always, which is the same accuracy as four decimals without percentage. That's not because I'm that strict in grading, uh, but I can ignore any rounding errors uh, if you write your answers up to fourth decimal. When I grade your homework and exams, I usually look at only up to the second decimal. But please keep the answer, just to be on safe side, up to four decimals, okay? All right. So this is how the Bernoulli distribution is formed. And there are a few other things that are important. How do you write down the Bernoulli distribution using the standard notations? You write x, now here's the standard notation. So first you have to define your random variable as a Bernoulli and a variable. So x could be flipping a coin or it could be rolling a die and so on. Okay? So x has to be defined first. And then you write down the distribution of x this way. x and that little waveform. How do you write it? How do you read it? x is distributed. x is distributed and then Bernoulli. We write the complete word Bernoulli. It has a bit weird spelling. Please try to remember. X is distributed Bernoulli. And we know when you say Bernoulli, it has success and failure. 
So what I need is the probability of success. So we write P within parentheses. Okay, you write down only the probability of success. For example, rolling a die. So X may be rolling a die. If it is an unbiased die, then X is Burnley with probability of one sixth because I'm rolling it to see if I get number six. So probability of success is one sixth if it is unbiased. So inside parentheses, I will only write one sixth. So this is the standard notation. In addition to that, you will also need the mean and variance. So the mean for the Bernoulli distribution, just like for the normal distribution, we had a mean and variance for the normal distribution, right? So every distribution will have a mean and a variance. For the Bernoulli distribution, the mean is also equal to the probability of success, which is P. You will need these things. And then you will also need the variance. The variance is equal to P times 1 minus P, which is the probability of success times probability of failure. That is the variance for the Bernoulli distribution. Now, how do we obtain these equations? Well, that's beyond the discussion of statistics level. For every probability distribution, I will tell you the mean and the variance. I will only give you the equations for them. We cannot derive these equations at intro statistics level. And if I have the variance, how can I find the standard deviation? Standard deviation should be equal to what? It's the square root of the variance. Okay, So it will be the square root of the variance. All right, uh, so this is basically all you will need to understand the Bernoulli distribution at intro statistics level. And please read point number six. It's a complete question from the Bernoulli distribution. Please read all of these and see if you can answer. Point number six, among all the people with melanoma of the skin, from the time of initial diagnosis, the probability of five year survival is 92%. Model this as a Bernoulli distribution with two outcomes, survival, which is the success, and death, which is the failure. That's how they are defined in this question. Part A, what's the random variable X? Write the distribution of X using the standard notations. So, for point number six, part A, I will define X as the survival or death from the skin cancer. Okay. And for this, we have defined survival as the success and death as the failure. It's already defined. And then I need to write down the distribution of X using the standard notations. So we said the standard notations are like this. X is distributed Bernoulli. So you have to write it in full Bernoulli. And then within parentheses, I should write the probability of success. So the probability of success is given as 92%. So I will write it as 0.92. You may write it as 92% or 0.92. Either way it is fine. That's all I need for part A. But please make sure that if you write this part alone, your answer is not complete. Okay? Part A requires you to write both pieces. The definition of x, the random variable, and the distribution using the standard notations. All right, let's go to part B. What's the probability of death within five years of diagnosis? Actually, the complete definition must have that five-year part. 
survival or death from skin cancer within five years. Okay. Five years of diagnosis. That's a complete definition. Now, 0.92 is the probability of success, which is the survival. Now, what I need is the probability of death, which is the probability of failure. We said this is equal to 1 minus p, right? So p is 0.92 probability of success. So it is 1 minus 0.92, which is 0 0.08. Now, all these steps don't have to be shown. Uh, if you simply write the probability of death, you can write it this way, or simply you can write it in words, probability of death equals 0 0.08. This is all I need. In part C, a person was diagnosed with melanoma of the skin, and he wants to know the average probability of survival. What's the average probability of survival? That means I simply need the average, or the mean. So part C. So the average, or the mean, for the binomial distribution is just equal to p. Remember, that's how we define it. So p equals 0.92. That's his probability of five-year survival. And then part d, what's the variability or the variance of the survival probability? So the variance for binomial distribution was defined as p times one minus p. So p is 0.92, that times 1 minus 0.92, which is 0 0.08. So you can find this probability. And then what's the standard deviation of the predicted survival rate? Standard deviation, how do you find the standard deviation? Standard deviation is always the square root of the variance, right? The square root of variance. So we already calculated variance in the previous step. Just take the square root of this number, you get the answer. Okay? Let's now go to point number seven, binomial distribution. Now the binomial distribution is a simple extension of the Bernoulli distribution. In the Bernoulli distribution, we had Bernoulli trials, which means any trial with only two possible outcomes. But we had a restriction for the Bernoulli distribution. So the restriction was we had only one trial. You flip a coin, but you do it only one time. You roll a die for number six, but you do it only one time. You model the probability of survival from a sickness for a patient, but you do it only for one patient. What if I had more than one patient? I had to model for 30 patients in a hospital. I'm allowed to roll a die for, let's say, 10 times. I need to see how many times will I get number six. Or I'm allowed to flip a coin, let's say, 15 times. I need to see how many times will I get head. Now, that kind of probabilities are modeled using the binomial distribution. So. Let's see what is this binomial distribution. Binomial distribution is also for discrete random variable x such that, this is my abbreviation for such that, it has only two outcomes, it still has only two outcomes. And more trials are allowed than one more than one trial, okay? In general, n number of trials. We write down a few examples. Flipping a coin, let's say 15 times. So n equals 15. You still have two outcomes, head or tail, but you have n equals 15, okay? So head or tail are the possible outcomes. But you have n equals 15. Um, another example could be uh, survival of 10 cancer patients. So 
So this may be the five years survival. So the outcomes are, the possible outcomes are survived or dead. And I have n equals 10. I still have just two outcomes, but there is a repetition of number of trials. The discrete random variable x, such that only two outcomes and more than one trial are allowed, will be modeled as binomial distribution. Okay. So, what are the standard notations and what are the main and standard deviations and how to find the probabilities? For that, I will let x be a random variable which follows the binomial distribution. I will have a probability of success and the number of trials. So the binomial distribution actually has two parameters, P and N. Okay. So I will write down those two parameters. Let's say N is the number of trials. And then we have P is the probability of success. So x be a random variable from the binomial distribution, which means it has just two outcomes. One outcome is called the success. The other outcome is called the failure. And I have n number of trials. Probability of success is equal to p. The standard notation is this. You write x is distributed. Now this time you don't write everything as binomial, you just write B. B stands for binomial. And then you write N and then you write P. This is a standard notation for the binomial distribution. For example, flipping a coin 15 times. If it is an unbiased coin, I can write that excess binomial, I have 15, 15 comma, unbiased coin will have probability of success as one half. So if I define h as the success, probability of success will be one half. For this example, if I define survival as the probability of success, n equals 10, in that case x is distributed binomial, n is 10, therefore 10 comma, P, probability of survival. If it is 92%, you can write 0.92. Now, I will also need to find the mean and the standard deviation. So the mean for the binomial distribution is given by this equation. Your calculator doesn't have this equation either for mean. Mean equals n times P. And then you have variance. The variance is equal to n times p times 1 minus p. And if I need to find the standard deviation, what I have to do? I just have to take the square root of the variance. That's the standard deviation. And if I need to find a probability of the form probability x equals k to find probability x equals k, in your calculator, you have to use binomial PDF. Equal probabilities are found using binomial PDF. And if you have to find the probability of the form x is lesser than or equal to k, we will use binomial CDF. PDF stands for the probability distribution function. CDF stands for the cumulative distribution function. And if you need to find a right-hand probability, 
That means the probability of the form x is greater than or equal to k plus 1. In that case, you will have to use that equation. 1 minus probability x is lesser than or equal to k. I will always follow these steps when asking questions. I will ask you to calculate a probability like this first. In the next step, I will ask you to calculate a probability like that. In that case, you will have to subtract the previous answer from 1 in order to obtain these kinds of probabilities. Let's go to point number 8. It has a complete question from the binomial distribution. Read and see if you can answer all the parts. Question number 8. It's a similar question to the previous example. Among all the people with melanoma of the skin, from the time of initial diagnosis, the five-year survival rate is 92%. There are 30 such patients in a hospital. That 30 is equal to N. Model this as a binomial distribution. Part A, what's the random variable X? Write the distribution of X using the standard notations. So how do you define random variable x this time? We can define x as the five-year survival from the skin cancer, not for one patient, but for all 30 patients. Okay. So five-year survival for 30 patients survival from the melanoma of the skin. And then I need to write down the distribution of x using the standard notations. We have success, which is the survival, and failure is, is death. The probability of success is given as 92%. And then you write x is distributed binomial, you just write a b here, and then n comma p. So n is 30, 30 patients. And then you have to write the probability of success, which is p, which is 0.92. Or you may write as 92%. So this is the standard notation for the binomial distribution. That's all I need for part A. And then part B. How many out of 30 people on the average could be expected to survive five years? What's the variance of your estimate? Simply, I need the average or the mean and variance. So let's find those two parts for part B. Average, oh, I meant as this as mean. We know this is given by n times p, right? So n is equal to 30. That times p is 0 0.92. And then you have to use your calculator and multiply these two numbers and write down the final answer. So that's the average. So if you do this calculation, we get 27.6. Now, of course, we are talking about people. So 27.6 doesn't make sense. 0.6 doesn't make sense. At least 27 people will survive. That's how we can interpret this. Okay? Most probably, this is approximately equal to 28. But this rounding is not required. Uh, but you must have that practical understanding when we deal with these kinds of distributions. Okay? But for the exams and for the homework, uh, you don't have to worry about rounding part. And then I also will need to calculate the variance of this estimate. So the variance is given by what? Variance is equal to n times p times 1 minus p. So n equals 30, p equals 0 0.92, 1 minus p is 1 minus 0 0.92, which is 0 0.08. So you can multiply these three numbers and find the variance. So if you do that, we get 2.208. Now, if I also need to find the standard deviation, I just have to take the square root. 
Now, when I write down this answer, am I supposed to round it to the nearest integer and say it 2? Well, variance, if you remember the equation, has squared units. So this is like number of people squared. That doesn't make sense. So this number, variance, can always be allowed to be decimal for any random variable. Could be a continuous random variable or it could be a discrete random variable. But if you look at the standard deviation for this example, that will have the square root of variance, which means the first order term. That, if you round to the nearest integer, makes more sense. Okay? But rounding is not required uh, for these calculations, any of these calculations, for you to get full marks in the homework and for the exams. Let's go to part C. So in part C, I need to find a probability. What's the probability I need? I need the probability that x is equal to 25 because it says what's the probability that exactly 25 people will survive 5 years. So x is out of all 30 people. So what is this probability? x is equal to 25. Survival of only 25. Now in order to find this probability, what's the function I should use? Is that binomial CDF or binomial PDF? In your calculator, you have to go to binomial PDF, right? Because it's a strictly equal probability. For these kinds of probabilities with discrete distributions, we do binomial PDF. All right, let's go to your calculator. Here's the calculator again. I have to once again go to distributions. For that, I have to press second and variables. That's where we have distributions. Now I have to scroll down until I see binomial PDF. You can see after zero, you have a binomial PDF. Select that function. Do not select b binomial CDF for this calculation. Select a binomial PDF. Hit enter. The trials, which means the number of trials. We have 30 patients, so n equals 30. P is the probability of success, which is 0.92. X value. I have to find the probability when X is equal to 25. Therefore, X value is 25. We can select, paste, and hit enter. If you are using an older version of the TI calculator, you might see binomial PDF and open parentheses. In that case, enter these numbers in this order separated by commas. 30, 0 0.92, 25. Then you can close parentheses and then hit enter and hit enter again. The required answer is 0 0.0581. Approximately, it's 0 0.0581 after the fourth decimal. Well, I have an additional question now. Probability of survival is super high as 92%. And expected average is almost 28 people will survive. Then why exactly 25 people will be survived with such a small probability? Exactly 25 people will be survived with 0 0.0581, or in other words, approximately just 5.8%. That makes sense, because this 92% is the probability of survival per person. Rather than exactly 25 people, much more than 25 people will be survived. Of course, the average is 28. If you look at the probability of survival, maybe greater than or equal to 25, we will possibly get a large number because of this large probability. So these probabilities always make sense. Part D, what's the probability that 24 or lesser than 24 people will survive five years? So for part D of this question, I need the probability that x is lesser than or equal to 24. Now, I have to use binomial CDF for this question. Let's go to your calculator. Case the calculator again. Let's go to distributions, second, variables. This time, we have to select binomial CDF. Let's scroll down and you can see B, binomial CDF. This time, we do not select PDF. The probability that we have to calculate this time is a cumulative probability. Therefore, select B, binomial CDF. Hit enter. 
trials, which is given by N. There are 30 patients, therefore N equals 30. P, the probability of success, which is 0 0.92. The X value is 24. Select paste and hit enter. If you are using an older version of the TI calculator, you will see binomial CDF and open parentheses. In that case, enter these numbers in this order, separated by commas. 30, comma, 0.92, comma, 24. Close the parentheses, and then you can hit enter, and hit enter again. The required answer is 0 0.0293. So the answer approximately is 0 0.0293. Now that's actually good. Being lesser than or equal to 24 is just about 3% of E. What's the probability that 25 or more than 25 people will survive five years? That means for part E, I need probability X is greater than or equal to 25. Now, how can I find this guy? I have to use that probability x is greater than or equal to k plus 1 equation, which is equal to 1 minus probability x is lesser than or equal to k, because x is a discrete random variable. So this is 25. On the right hand side, it should be 1 minus probability x is lesser than or equal to 24. So like I said earlier, I will always ask you to calculate this probability in the step before this calculation. All right, so we calculated this guy in the previous step. So it will be 1 minus 0 0.0293. This is equal to 0 0.9707. About 97%. That's a 97% probability for more than or equal to 25 people will survive 5 years out of the 30 total. Before moving into the next distribution, which is the Poisson distribution, I need to add a quick comment for the binomial distribution. How does your calculator calculate these probabilities? The binomial distribution, the probabilities are calculated this way. If I need to find the probability that x is equal to k, it's given by this equation, n k times p k times 1 minus p raised to the n minus k. Now, what does that mean? This means n choose k. How many ways I have to choose k number of units out of n? For example, if I have 30 patients, this is patient 1, patient 2, patient 3, and so on, up to 30 patients. Now, when we say probability x is equal to 25, What's the probability that exactly 25 patients will survive? So how many ways I can select 25 out of 30? Because each patient has a 92% chance of survival. Maybe the first 25 can be selected. Maybe the last 25 can be selected. Maybe 25 in between can be selected. Maybe first and five and then another 23 uh, patients can be selected. So how many ways I can select 25 patients. That is the explanation for this part. That calculation is read as that n choose k. Out of n, how many ways I have to choose k number of subjects? And then p is the probability of success. k is the required value I have here. So I can easily calculate these two values and then I can multiply them. So this is the calculation, the equation that your calculator uses to calculate the probabilities of this form. And then, in order to calculate the probabilities such as lesser than or equal to k, your calculator will calculate all these probabilities when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 1, x is equal to 2, x is equal to 3, and up to x is equal to k. All these values will be added in order to find this value when you use CDF. This is the calculation done at PDF. Okay. Um, of course, you don't have to remember these equations. Uh, we will simply use your calculator, but I just uh, didn't want to uh, go into the next section without uh, 
telling you how does your calculator find these probabilities. Let's go to point number nine, the Poisson distribution. The Poisson distribution is such an interesting distribution. Uh, usually to model discrete random variables that are given as rates. Rates, what are the rates? That means a discrete random variable happening within a given period of time or within a given area. I will write it down first. Uh, for discrete random variables again, for discrete random variables which have specific rate for example uh, number of vehicles passing an intersection within an hour or within a complete day otherwise I have no way to model that okay number of vehicles passing an intersection that doesn't make sense we need a specific duration so number of vehicles through an intersection um, I would say within an hour now that's the rate okay. and another example could be number of defects found from a batch of 1,000 units of production from a factory. So likewise, uh, when you define it as a certain rate, we can use the Poisson distribution uh, most likely. Another example could be you observe a certain area and you try to find how many land mines exist in that area okay number of land mines in one square mile so all these variables have a specific rate and there's another characteristic that variable doesn't have a fixed upper limit right number of vehicles passing an intersection within an hour how many vehicles can we expect well there may be practically a certain finite upper limit when we observe every day but we can't be specific about that upper limit for this example number of defects found from a batch of 1000 units well there is an upper limit of 1000 but Practically speaking, number of defects may be such a small number like two or three or four. Allowing it up to 1,000 means not practical. It may have some upper limit practically, which is far lesser than 1,000, maybe 10. But we don't know exactly what that upper limit is. It is still unknown. Okay. Number of land mines in a one square mile area for certain war zone. Well, that could be 1, could be 0, it could be 10, it could be 15, we don't know the upper limit. So that kind of variables are modeled usually using the Poisson distribution. Read the questions carefully. You can always figure out the name of the distribution of the given random variable. So, which has a specific rate, and I will also add one more comment, and no specific upper limit. So the rate is the only parameter of the Poisson distribution. It is not Poisson, okay? it is Poisson. There are two S's for the Poisson distribution. Now the rate is uh, given as a Greek letter as lambda. This is the Greek letter. It is read as lambda. So in your calculator also, it is lambda. The rate is entered as lambda. Well, some new calculators, including the one that I'm using, the rate is also given as mu. Um, that's okay because later you will see that the rate is also equal to the mean. 
and also the variance. So some calculators, instead of lambda, use mu. Uh, that's completely all right. Just keep that in mind, okay? All right, so let's look at the standard notations. So here's the standard notation. You will have to define your x, okay? x has to be defined, whatever the random variable. Remember that x can take technically any value. x can be equal to 0, it could be equal to 1, it could be equal to 2, 3, and there's no specific upper limit. The standard notation is this. x is distributed, this little waveform is read as is distributed, Poisson. You write complete name, Poisson. And then within parentheses, you write down the parameter, rate, parameter, lambda. And that's it. And it has a mean and a variance. Both mean and variance are equal to each other. They will be equal to lambda. And if you want to find the standard deviation, you have to take the square root of the variance, as usual. If you need to find a probability, like probability x equals k, you have to use Poisson PDF. And if you have to find a probability such as x is lesser than or equal to k, then you have to use Poisson CDF. And if you have to find a probability such as x is greater than or equal to k plus 1, we have to use the identity 1 minus probability x is lesser than or equal to k. That's because x is a discrete kind of variable. I will also give you the equation that your calculator uses in order to find these kinds of probabilities. If I have to find say probability x equals k, I can simply use our calculator. But this is the equation that your calculator uses. x equals k equals lambda to the k e raised to the negative lambda divided by k factorial. What is this k factorial? These things are straightforward to understand. e is the natural base, exponential function. Lambda should be given in the question. k should also be given x equals 3, for example, then k will be equal to 3. But what is this factorial k? Factorial k means, for example, factorial 5 means 5 times, 4 times, 3 times, 2 times, 1. All the numbers multiplied up to that given value. So factorial 3 means 3 times, 2 times, 1. And if you need to calculate a probability like this, a cumulative probability, your calculator We'll calculate these kinds of probabilities one by one from the probability of x is equal to 0 and then probability of x is equal to 1, probability of x is equal to 2, x is equal to 3 and so on. They, we'll calculate up to k and then they are summed up in order to find the probability of x is lesser than or equal to k. You don't have to remember this equation uh, because we are going to use the calculator rather than this equation to calculate our required probabilities. All right, that's all you need to know about the Poisson distribution. Let's go to the next page. You have point number 10, and it's a complete question from the Poisson distribution. Please go ahead and read and see if you can answer. Question number 10, assume that the sky tonight has a meteor shower at 5 meters per hour. Model this as a Poisson distribution. So can you see the rate? Rate is equal to 5 per hour. Okay. All right, so part A, what's the random variable x? Write the distribution of x using the standard notations. That will always be part A for any questions from probability distributions. All right. So part A for question number 10, I have to first define x is the number of meteors within an hour.
the distribution of x should be written. So x is distributed Poisson, and your lambda is equal to 5. In some calculators, this is the value for mu. Part b, what are the mean and the variance of the number of meteors that you may see tonight within an hour? So part b is mean and variance. We said for the Poisson distribution, both mean and variance are equal to each other, and they are equal to the lambda value given. Okay, so lambda is equal to 5 for this example. So mean should be equal to 5. The variance should also be equal to 5. Part C, if the sky is observed tonight, what's the probability that you will see exactly 7 meteors? That means I need the probability that x is equal to 7, exactly 7. So how can I find it? I have to go to distributions, select Poisson PDF, probability distribution function. All right, let's go to your calculator. Let's go to distributions, second variables, that's where we have distributions, and then I have to scroll down until I see Poisson PDF. You can see D and E are Poisson functions. D stands for Poisson PDF, and E stands for Poisson CDF. What we need for this calculation is Poisson PDF. Select D Poisson PDF, hit enter. In this calculator, the lambda value is given as mu. The lambda value is equal to five, so I will enter mu is equal to five. X value is seven. We can select paste and hit enter. For all the versions of the I calculator, you might see Poisson PDF and open parentheses. In that case, enter these numbers in this order, separated by a comma, five comma seven. And then you have to close parentheses and hit enter and hit enter again. The answer is 0 0.1044. 0 0.1044. That's the answer necessary for part C. Part D, if the sky is observed tonight, what's the probability that you will see seven or lesser than seven meteors? That means I need probability x is lesser than or equal to seven. Now, how can I find that? To find that, I need to go for Poisson CDF. Let's go to the calculator again. We will go to distributions again, second, variables, and this time I have to scroll down and select Poisson CDF. Select E Poisson CDF, hit enter. The mu value is the lambda value, which is equal to five. This time, x is equal to seven. Poisson CDF function will calculate the probability that x is lesser than or equal to seven when you enter x value as seven. We can select paste and hit enter. As always, for all the versions of the calculator, if you see Poisson CDF and open parentheses, enter mu and x values separated by a comma, in this case, five comma seven, close the parentheses and hit enter and hit enter again. The answer is 0 0.8666. 0.8666 as the answer. Please always write your answers up to the fourth decimal. All right, and then if I go to part E, if the sky is observed tonight, what's the probability that you will see eight or more than eight meteors? For part E, I need to do the calculation. Probability x is greater than or equal to eight. In order to find this probability, I cannot straight away use Poisson CDF. Instead, I have to use that equation, probability x is greater than or equal to k plus one, which is equal to one minus probability of x is lesser than or equal to k. So x is greater than or equal to eight. That probability should be equal to one minus probability what? x is lesser than or equal to seven, which is the probability that we calculated in the previous step. So you can easily find it, one minus 0.8666, and then you can get the answer. Don't just leave it as that, simplify this and find your final answer. Point number 11 is discrete distribution and discrete uniform distribution. 
in a discrete distribution, of course, x is a discrete random variable. X is discrete. And the probabilities are specifically given for each outcome. So for example, x can have several outcomes, um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the probabilities are given. This probability is given, this 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 is, this is given. They are all given. There are two conditions that should be satisfied by a discrete probability distribution. The first condition is each of these probabilities should be non-negative. That means they can be zero or they must be positive. Okay. Each probability given should be non-negative. And the second condition is the sum of all probabilities should be equal to 1. Because otherwise it will not be a valid probability distribution. Okay? Sum of all probabilities will be equal to 1 always. Now this actually has like uh, 8 outcomes including 0. Um, if seven probabilities are given and if one probability is not given, I can find that missing probability by subtracting from one. Um, that's a, a famous calculation in discrete distributions. And um, if all these probabilities are given and if you were asked to see if the given distribution is a valid discrete probability distribution, you have to check for these two conditions. Check each of the given probabilities and see if they are all non-negative. That means zero or positive. And then take the summation of all the given probabilities. If they are add up to one, then both conditions are met. That means the given distribution is a valid discrete probability distribution. All right. Now, now this is a specific example uh, with specific values for x and values for probabilities. Um, I will write down a generic example. Let's say the values of x are given as x1, x2, up to xn. Should this n be a finite number? Well, it can also have infinite number of outcomes. In that case, some of the probabilities will be zeros. That makes sense. All right, uh, anyways, I will discuss it for a finite example, just to make the life easy. So the first probability will be P1, the second probability will be P2, and so on. The last probability will be Pn. Now, I need to know a way to calculate the mean and variance and the probabilities. If you look at the title again, it is about the discrete distribution as well as the discrete uniform distribution. So what's the difference between those two distributions? This is an example for the discrete distribution. Now, if all of these probabilities are equal to each other, in that case, this becomes a discrete uniform distribution. For example, you are rolling a die. Uh, in that case, the possible outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Assume that it's an unbiased die. In that case, the probabilities can be given as 1 sixth. Each probability is 1 sixth. Right? In that case, this is a discrete uniform probability distribution. 
we will derive the equations for, actually we will not derive, I will simply write down the equations for the calculation of mean and variance for the general case. Okay? Um, we will need one more column to calculate the mean for the discrete probability distribution. That column is called x times p. That means you will multiply these values x1 times p1 and then you will multiply x2 and p2, x2 times p2. Likewise you do that for every single data point in this table. Finally xn times pn. Now if I take the summation of all these, summation of xp, that will be equal to the mean of the distribution. That's how you calculate the mean for this distribution. All right, so we calculated the mean. I can write it uh, as that mean, or you can write a mu here. Yeah. All right, what we have to do next is to calculate the variance. In order to calculate the variance, we have to do a bit more complicated calculation. From here, I found mu. Now, mu should be subtracted from each x. And then you have to square it. So from x1, I will have to subtract mu. And then you are going to square it. And that's not enough. You will also have to multiply that quantity by p1. And we have to do the same thing for the second observation. x2 minus mu and then squared times that by p2. Likewise, each x minus the calculated mean in the previous step, that squared times its corresponding probability. You will need a new column like that. Don't worry, this can be easily done using your TI-84 calculator. And then I will also write down the final data point, which is xn minus mu, everything squared, times pn. And now, I have to take the summation of all these values. That summation, sigma, I will use that sigma symbol to denote the summation. It should be x minus mu, everything squared, times p. Those values, that summation will give you the variance. Remember, summation of this column gave you the mean. Summation of this column gave you the variance. Okay, let's keep them in mind and go to the problem number 12. You have a discrete probability distribution. A simple lottery is designed to have the following odds of winnings. Note that this is a discrete probability distribution. Of course it is a discrete distribution. Now is it discrete uniform? No, it is not uniform because the given probability values are not all equal to one another. They are different. So it's just a discrete probability distribution. Part A, what's the random variable x described in this question? What's the name of the distribution above? There is no standard notation for the discrete distribution because we just have to view it as a table. So the random variable x is the winning amounts of the lottery. Name of the distribution is discrete distribution. You cannot just write discrete distribution if the probabilities are equal to one another. Okay, if the probabilities are equal to one another, the complete name of the distribution will be discrete uniform distribution. Okay, but here it is not uniform. All right, part B, find the expected cost and the expected risk, which means you have to find the mean or the average and the variance. Uh, in fact, expected risk means the standard deviation. 
That means I have to first calculate the variance and then I can take the square root of the variance. Okay, so remember these two equations and let's go to your calculator and find the mean and variance. Here's the calculator. I have a data set given, so I have to first enter the data set. To enter the data set, I have to go to stat, edit, number one, edit, hit enter. We will enter the x values into the list L1 and the given probabilities into list L2. The x values start with zero and the next value is two and the next value is seven and we have 10, 100, 250 and 1000. Into list L2, I will enter the given probabilities. The odds of winnings for zero dollars is 0 0.95. Odds of winnings for $2 is 0 0.045. For the next dollar amount, it's 0 0.0045. For the next dollar amount, it is 0 0.30045. For the next dollar amount, it's 0 0.4045. For the next odds of winnings is $250. You have 0 0.5 zeros and 0.45. For $1,000 amount, the odds of winnings is you have six zeros and five. 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six zeros and five. All right, I have entered the complete data set. Now, in order to calculate the mean, I need to multiply x values and the p values. x values are already in list L1, the p values are already in list L2. To multiply those two values, we have a shortcut. Select the list label L3 using the arrow keys. Once the label L3 is selected, you can see that L3 label becomes black and below the table, you can see L3 equals. What I need to do is to multiply X and P values, or in other words, entries in L1 and L2 should be multiplied with each other. So I will write down an equation for L3. L3 equals L1 times L2, which means second one. That's how I can write L1. And then multiplication symbol, second and two. That's how I can write L2. Now, look at this equation again. L3 equals L1 times L2. I will hit enter. Now you can see that the list L3 has the products of entries in L1 and L2. The mean of the data set is the summation of all the numbers in L3. That means I have to run descriptive statistics for the data in L3 and take the summation. Or in other words, I have to select sigma x for the entries in L3. To do that, let's go to stat, select calc, select number one, one variable stats, hit enter. I have to define the list where I need to run the descriptive statistics. My data set is in list L3. L3 has to be defined as second and three. Now the list is L3. We skip frequency list, select calculate, and then hit enter. We do not select X bar for mean. Mean is the summation of all the entries in list L3. The summation is given by sigma X, which is 0 0.1321. It's not too long in decimals. We may remember the complete sigma x, which is 0 0.132125, because we have to use that value for the calculation of variance. How do you calculate the variance? We need to go back to the data set. Let's go back to the data set. Stat, edit, number one, edit, hit enter. Now, what I have to do is I have to subtract that previously calculated mean from each of the data points in list L1. And then we have to square them. And then we have to multiply those values 
with the entries in L2 because the equation was x minus mu squared times p. We will enter that equation into list L4. Just like earlier, select the list L4 label. Once L4 label is selected, you can see that the label area is shown in black. And then you can see below the table that L4 equals is being appeared. Now this is where we are going to write x minus mu squared times p. Or in other words, L1 minus mu is 0 0.132125, everything squared times L2, because we have p values in L2. To write that equation, we will open parentheses, now you can see L4 equals open parentheses. We need X minus mu, which is L1, which is second and one minus mu, which is 0 0.132125. We will close the parentheses and we have to square everything. You can see that there's a key for squaring this quantity. Just press that. Now I have the square. I have to multiply this by the probabilities. The probabilities are in L2. So multiplication and second and two. Now that's the equation I need to write for L4. Now let's hit enter. For the variance, I need to take the summation of all the entries in L4. Let's go to stat again, select calc, select one variable stats, hit enter. This time I have to define list as L4, second, four. Now the list is L4. Skip frequency list, select calculate, hit enter. We said, the variance is the summation of all the entries in list L4. Therefore, the variance should be sigma x, which is equal to 1.6593, approximately. If I need the standard deviation, which is exactly what I need because I need the expected risk. Expected risk means the standard deviation. I have to take the square root of 1.6593. 6593, which is 1.288. The expected risk is 1.288. This is a dollar amount that you risk with every single lottery that's sold. Now we can answer part C as well. What's the probability of winning $10? What's your answer for that? Now these questions are very easy. You just have to read from the table and answer. Okay, what's the probability of X2 is equal to P2? Likewise, you just go back to the table and answer that question. What's the probability of winning $10? $10 has a probability of 0 0.00045. That's the answer required for part C. And then part D, what's the probability of winning $150 or lesser? Of course, there's no specific value for $150, but $150 or lesser means $0, $2, $7, $10, and $100. Because the next reading is $250, which is larger than $150, okay? So the probabilities corresponding to those values of X zero dollars, two dollars, seven dollars, ten dollars, and one hundred dollars should be added. That's what you need for part D of that question. And then part E, what's the probability of winning one hundred and fifty dollars or more? For that, you have to add the probabilities given in front of the X values of two hundred and fifty dollars and one thousand dollars. That's very easy, and uh, that's all about the discrete probability distributions that you will need for the intro statistics class. All right, thanks.